In Detroit, the phrase, the streets is watching, it's taken on new meaning. A group named New Era is changing the narrative that black men don't step up to protect their communities. That's the reason that we out here, to protect innocent people and give people who just trying to go about their day-to-day life a sense of safety and security as they move around their city. The Brothers of New Era have taken it upon themselves to protect our communities from police brutality and other crimes against black and brown people. Joining me now is Isaiah Zeke Williams. He's the founder of the New Era Detroit organization. Zeke, my brother, it's good to see you. It's an honor to have you on the show. Talk to me about exactly what y'all are doing and why it's so important. You know, we just believe wholeheartedly when it comes to, you know, the safety of black communities, the well-being of black communities, you know, is the responsibility of the people in the community, in particular black men uh, in the community. So for us, um, you know, it's just us out doing what we're supposed to do. We live in these communities, so it's our job to help and, and, and make sure that, you know, the communities that we live in have a certain level of safety. You know, one of the things that people in the community are looking for safety from is law enforcement. Um, Of course, black people are more likely to be killed by police than anyone else. Um, How does a group like New Era help cut down on police involved shootings and worst case scenario deaths? Uh, As outreach, you know, for us to be able to be out in our community, um, we build we have relationships with people out in the community. Um, you know, we, when we move throughout the community, people have an understanding that, you know, we are genuinely there to help, um, and protect opposed to, you know, when you see someone with a badge on, it's typically okay. What do you want? Let me clinch up. You know, um, for us, we just really have to have an understanding of, you know, what police have been in America, you know, since it's, uh, uh, since it's been, Uh, established and then look at ourselves every year when we go through a lot of these situations uh, with law enforcement um, and opposed to sitting back and just complaining about situations, you know, I feel like the number one thing that we have to do as people uh, is figure out realistic solutions. So for us, uh, it's just putting ourselves in a position to make sure that we're able to get out in the community, build relationships with the people uh, in the community, focus in on conflict resolution, de-escalation, You know, some of these things uh, are common sense things that, you know, if you are protecting a group, a body of people that we need to make sure that we focus in on, not so much the aggression um, and and showing force. It's just uh, for us to be able to put ourselves in a position um, to just say, look, you know, we we live here just like you, you know, so we want safe communities just like you. Um, And we willing to do what we got to do to make that possible. I I like that your focus isn't just on police violence, because the truth is, you know, the likelihood of black people being killed by police is much higher than everybody else. But most days you're not going to get shot and killed by a police officer. But there's other kinds of violence in the community that also needs to be dealt with. You talked about conflict resolution. You talked about problem solving. Those are things that help reduce intracommunal violence so that black people can not engage in forms of harm against each other. Talk to me why it was important for you all to not just talk about police. Uh, Mark, I don't care who pulled the trigger. You feel me? Like, we just had a situation right. here uh, in the city of Detroit, a good sister named uh, Tracy Ghostin. Um, she was coming out of a uh, liquor store at night, and, um, you know, she was shot and killed, you know, murdered in cold blood, you know, and, and it's crazy. Had, it, had that been the police, then the whole world would have been up in arms about it. We, we don't get into the politics of who's killing black people in America. Our goal, we live in these communities. Sometimes it's by the hands of the police. Sometimes it's by the hands of people in the community. But regardless of who it's in the hands of, our goal is to come up with realistic solutions to cut down on that, especially when we're talking about innocent people. Our, we're big on leave innocent people alone. You know, women, children, elders, mm-hmm. off limits in our communities. And I feel like if we took this type of mindset and mentality in more black communities that we will see a a decrease in crime and violence. If people in the community step up instead of putting all of our hopes and dreams in law enforcement, that we will see, you know, decreases in some of the things that go on in our community. But if we continue to sit back docile and and waiting for a savior or answer for either a political uh, system or, you know, something above then we're going to continue to be in the same situation over and over. So, 
people in the community have to be more proactive. If we're going to sit and complain about problems, we need to be sitting and figuring out how to come up with solutions to these problems and how we're going to be able to do them ourselves. I like how you're talking, my brother. Now, you said women, children, and elders. Uh, let's talk about women in particular, black women, because I see a lot of the work that you all do uh, has been focused on making sure that black women are safe in public. Why that particular focus? Uh, you know, once again, um, you know, we from black communities, so we have an understanding of how black women have been treated in this country, um, you know, for years and years and years. And I always feel like black women are the most unprotected and disrespected group of people in America. I know if you look at the statistics on missing people, black women and black girls rate extremely high. Um, you know, crime against humanity, black women is up at the top. So, you know, for us, you know, these are the mother, this is the mother of civilization. You know, these are the mothers of our children. These are our sisters, you know, our, our, our aunties. You know, I feel like if, if we can't put ourselves in a position to say that by any means necessary, that, you know, sisters is off limits, as well as the kids, because we got that same, you know, notion when it comes to black babies um, being murdered in, in, in our communities, then, you know, who are we as people? I always tell people like men, like we, we put ourselves in a position to strive to be the best men. And, and it's all about Western society definition of what a man is. And at the end of the day, we royalty. We want to figure out what the definition of a king and the definition of a king is to protect and take care of the kingdom. So we look at our communities as a kingdom um, and we are, you know, doing the best that, that we can um, to protect our kingdom and build our kingdom and grow, you know, our kingdoms in a way that we know that they can be. We, we, we are talking about we the same people who built pyramids. We the same people that built this country for nothing. You mean to tell me we can't take control of the communities that we live in and, and, have, and have pride in doing so? I like how you talk. I only got a few seconds left, man, but some of your men are armed while they're on patrol. How, how, have, how have people responded to that? Um, once again, we've been working in our communities um, going on, on a decade. And when I say work, I mean everyday work. We just about a household name here in the city of Detroit. Um, people know us when they see us out. Um, people feel safe and protected when they see us out. It's no different from when you see a police officer with a firearm. You figure, hey, if somebody try to come, and do something who have a firearm, then we have a better, better chance of making out the situation. And also, you know, the men who are out in the community who do this work, you know, they're not getting paid. They don't have no uh, police pension to, to run home to after this. They're they not getting any benefits. You know, these are men in the community who want to make it home to their families as well. That's what makes it so beautiful what y'all are doing because you all have a lot to risk. You don't get paid for it and you're just doing the work. And I'm going to correct you on one thing. We don't feel just as safe seeing you as police. We feel safer seeing y'all than when we see the police, brother. Keep doing the work you do. We love you. Keep working. All right, everybody, stay right here. We got much more to talk about right here on The Grill.